Over 7,000 hours in Apex led me to creating this list of things you should not be doing if you want to be a good player, so let's get straight into it. The number one on this list is running with your gun. Guns in Apex slow you down a lot. The heavier gun you carry, the more it slows you down. Pistols don't slow you as much as light machine guns or snipers do, and there is a difference between these guns in carrying as well as aiming down sights. If you're running in the open, you may think, well, I want to have my gun in my hand to be able to shoot back if I get shot at. Uh oh, my boy, are you wrong? If you get shot at, get cover, heal up, pick up your gun, and shoot back after. If somebody shoots you first, shooting back gives you a very small chance to take down the enemy and considering the high time to kill, you're already picking at the disadvantage, which is something you never want to do. My recommendation is, only carry your gun if you know you will be shooting in the next 1 or 2 seconds. Number 2 on this list, being way too scared of playing inside the gas. Respawn recently made zone 1 damage equal to zone 2 and the first zone now comes much faster. This does not mean that you should quickly rotate though. Do not be predictable and run 5 feet in front of the zone. Always loot your POI, rotate to the next crafting, pop a heat shield on the crafter and curve medkits, even in the gas. You don't want to be running away from the gas with only one option, to go into the safe zone, because you're out of medkits. Instead, tank the first half of the zone, craft 4 medkits each and rotate wherever you want to, whenever you want to. And you'll have plenty of options to rotate too. And if there is a team gatekeeping, just go back into the zone and pick a different side to rotate from. Number 3 on the list, playing two guns that serve the same purpose. Usually, most of the players take two assault rifles and then they're either lacking long range or very close range and cannot support their team and win their 1v1s in shotgun range or they're useless when it comes to long range poking. Always take two guns, which are different. There is a reason why most of the professional players play shotgun and the mid-long range gun. Make sure you always carry one short range gun and one long range gun, using an SMG of your choice and a sniper of your choice, or a shotgun and an assault rifle seem like the best combinations to go for. Also, keep in mind what playstyle you have. I personally sometimes play Octane and I play SMG shotgun because I know that I will be able to force a short range fight with my opponents and then I will dominate. If you like sniping, feel free to take a sniper and a SMG, but then make sure you never fight close range as a peacekeeper will always win against an SMG given the fight is really close range. Number 4 on this list is not using grenades and using them to inflict damage. I've seen countless of clips of people who take 400 light ammo instead of the Arkstar and then they wonder why they can't actually do anything a guy with a simple cover. Or I see a player throw 5 arc stars on the same spot and then wonder why none of them hit or they see the enemy living in front of them while they're throwing the 6th arc star on the same pixel. Two things, use your grenade to force an enemy out of cover and then use your gun to inflict damage. Call out where the grenade is, ping the cover and tell your teammates to shoot as well. And make sure that you do not throw the grenades on the same place, for example, throw one grenade on the left and one grenade on the right, but most of the time one nicely placed grenade will do the job and make the enemy leave the cover. If not, you will have plenty of time to flank and throw the second one after you confirm the enemy still didn't move. And please, do not try to throw grenades to inflict damage. The only time you want to do that is when you're throwing a frag grenade in the sky and you're trying to inflict some opening damage so you can push. Number 5 on this list is move when you loot. If you play on a mouse and keyboard, you always need to move when you loot. W, A, S, D, and I'm going to give you one secret tip. You can also press number 1, number 2 to switch guns, and hit R to reload. This is also why you shouldn't be using scroll wheel to change guns, but 1 and 2. Always press 1, try reloading, then 2, and reload. Make sure that you have your guns reloaded once you're done looting and make sure you do this subconsciously while looting. If you play on controller, get some momentum and right before the interact fully loads, jump for the most potential movement. Number 6 on the list is communicate. Okay, let's go look at this fight. Apex Legends is a team game, so you should always try to squad up with your homies people you find on discords or even good randoms you've met on the way. Even if you aren't themed up with anybody, make sure you use the voice chat. Using discord is the best option, but if you can't 
or perhaps you're not as comfortable, use the voice chat, but actually use it. What's great is binding your voice chat push to talk to a side mouse button instead of the keyboard. This will allow you to talk while shooting and doing other stuff with your left hand. And stop smiling you little perv, did not mean it like that. Make sure you call out everything, and if you play on a controller, having an open mic is a great option. Just try not to have, you know, everything going on in your background, so you don't torture your teammates and they aren't forced to mute you. And the last thing I have for you is commit to calls and decisions. There is a saying in Apex, having three people on the wrong call is better than having two people on the wrong call and one person on the right call. And this is 100% true. Having three people holding hands, pushing together is just unbeatable. You rarely find this doing solo queue, but make sure to at least push with one of your teammates when he engages in fights. Also, commit to making decisions. Always decide on things regardless of the outcome. If you do not decide, you might lose just because you didn't decide. If you make a decision and it's a bad decision, you at least know that the decision was bad and you shouldn't make it next time. And this forms you as a player. This is also why when you have the specific teammate that always goes first, doesn't ping anything, doesn't communicate and rushes, just go with him. When I coach my students and we do a queue and we get this type of teammate, I in fact even though I have 7000 hours in the game, I play in the ALGS in the Pro League, I follow that guy, I help him out. I don't just ego him and tell him that I know more and he should follow me because I'm a better player. Take note on what he does, study him, does he do a good mistake, does it cost the game, does he do something great, and always try to give feedback on the situation. Make sure you are not toxic to him and say it in the mic, but in your head actively think about the decisions he's taking and the decisions you're making. Maybe you get gatekept because you took a fight in the zone. This might mean that taking fights in the zone are not as good and you might get gatekept next time you do it. This will form your playstyle and you as a player. Develop these patterns from these situations and decide on how you'd like to play. There are people who take zone very early in Apex and there are teams who play edge. Is edge easier? Yes. Is edge more profitable? Yes. On the other hand, is playing zone equally good for some people? Yes. You are an individual human being and you might like something else. That's also why you might like some of these tips and some you might dislike. And these were my 7 tips on how to not suck in Apex Legends. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and good luck in your games.